Okay, shucks. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys? Happy Sunday. We are just, um, yes, honey. We're just um, switching the camera so we can actually um, record and stream. So thank you so much. Hi, sweet one. Hi, Glory. I hear you, baby. Yeah, I know you want to play. I know, honey. Oh, awesome. Is it working? Is it which is it this camera? This one. This one. Okay, awesome. Hi, good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday to everyone. Um, honey, this is too low, love. I know. You see daddy behind the camera? Oh my goodness. You can move the um the arm to like. Yeah. Hi. Um, remember, you're probably going to be standing on this side, too. Um, <laughs> I know sometimes we leave the camera up and then Gloria likes to play with the tripod. So it's, no, just turn it around so you can actually see it, like, so you can adjust it. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, Hi, Elijah. Hey. <laughs> Thank you so much for your patience. Hey, Ariel. Hello, everyone. Happy Sunday. And so, uh, yeah, I think that looks great. <laughs> yeah, great, great, great. Okay, awesome. And you guys can hear me all good? Everything looks good? Okay, awesome. So what's amazing is that uh, Ron and I have been praying about this specific Sunday. And what the Lord has been sharing with us, and like I know Pastor Rob is going to go more into um, his teaching, his sermon today, but what the Lord was sharing with me too uh, was that that God wants um, freedom from cycles, right? Freedom from like what was in the past and like habits and mindsets and thinking, uh, but what does the end to the beginning mean, right? And so like you see this all over scripture where um, you must die to live, right? You must um, actually experience like death to have real life. And so what's amazing is that uh, God is telling me that even this morning on Sunday, that today is a new day. You know, uh, that today, that this moment and every single moment is new and filled with him. So I just want to um, thank God today for um, for a new new moments every moment that's clean and clear and filled with the blood of Jesus um, that we don't have to be in bondage to the past or the things that were even a second ago. Right? Dad. Yeah, that's Daddy. He's over there with the Bible. So let me just pray us. Um, to begin and then share a little bit, do some announcements and then introduce Rana. So Father, we just thank you so much that today is a new Sunday, that this moment is a special sacred moment just to spend time with you, to enjoy um, you who wants to give us and show us new things god i thank you so much for glory to glory that we go with you god i thank you jesus for um for a pure heart and a clear conscience before you god you say that we can boldly approach your throne because of the blood of jesus and now as we Go from that place to being in union with you. Yeah. I know that's daddy over there. Yeah, you want daddy. I know. That we can have pure hearts in front of you to be new again. What does it mean to be a child of God? That our desires and our need for God is good and pure. I thank you, Jesus, for even um, God is highlighting this phrase uh, like a wind of change so i thank you jesus for even hope in the new um hope in the new that is found in you and you alone god i thank you so much for uh, for transformation for change that is not from self-discipline 
or um, hard work or struggle, but Lord, um, there is something so sweet about being loved by you, God, uh, being heard by you, uh, being seen by you, God. I thank you, Jesus, that your love is more than enough. And I say, yes, God, we want to understand more of your love, God. I thank you, Jesus, that every time we look at you and read your scripture, it is a revelation of you to get to know you um, and to enjoy our time with you. Yeah, so even as this morning I was speaking to, um, to a couple sisters this morning and there was like that sense of God wanting to pour out his love, his like amazing love that uh, is perfect and full of peace instead of fear. And I thank you, Jesus, that your fullness is enough, that your fullness is um, like your kingdom ever advancing, ever advancing. I thank you, Jesus, that you are good and it is you that is ever advancing. Dada. Yeah, that's Dada. Yeah, that's Dada. We say in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Amen. So in this series, we've been talking about the last couple of weeks has been the cross. So what does it mean to be crucified with Christ? And then the last couple of weeks has been especially what does the grave, the tomb mean with Jesus? And so from what's interesting from the beginning of our Christian walk is actually the end of our old self, right? the end of our old self. So that also means the end of slavery to the master of sin, that no longer are we uh, bonded to the master of sin, that we can actually recognize in our, even our own desires for sin is very different now, right? Even the Holy Spirit will convict you, will reveal to you, will um, gently knock on your door with God's amazing love that hey, beloved, something is different. Something is, you know, like whether it's, there needs to be an alignment to his word and to his heart, or there's actually like real joy and real peace in what he wants to do. Um, also in the tomb where you can actually rest because of what Jesus accomplished, right? And so I want to encourage you guys to, what I heard was like, Spend some time today to not just look at the cross in um, bad, 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 what, what Jesus physically did, but like also what um, what freedom in the fullness of God that He brought us into, right? Towards and bonded with, um, yeah. So also today we're finally going to be talking about the specific resurrection life. So what does that actually mean? And I just want to thank you everyone that's joining us here on live and in person as well. Um, yeah, that it's going to be amazing time just to really understand even like the Jewish roots of what the Old Testament speaks about, because not only is the, uh, the, the cross and the tomb and the new life found in the new gospel and the new covenant, but it's actually seen and ingrained within us in the Old Testament as well, as in the people of God. And so um, I just want to thank you guys. We are working on a how to process prophetic word as well, because we had such a great time with ministry on Friday. I'm so thankful everyone that was able to join. Feel free to listen in whenever you guys want to. We're going to continue just doing that on Fridays. Uh, pray, prophesy, and do personal ministry with you guys, because even though uh, we don't see a lot of you guys in person, um, we're so thankful to connect online, and just like whenever you guys need to as well, even outside of Fridays and Sundays, we're more than happy to hang out, to chat, and to talk, but specifically on Friday, we're just blocking it off so we can do some personal ministry to connect, to build community within and also around um, Jesus, because he's the only one that really matters, right? Um, he's the one that can bring you comfort and peace, joy, excitement into uh, what is going on. Yeah. So what else? 
Um, we're, I think we can send it today, right? Yeah. Us using the prophetic word, yeah. He's done, he's done it okay, awesome. So we can actually send it out later today. Um, in terms of just processing, like, how, what are like practical steps and guidelines? So it's not just rules, but it's just a guideline to see where the Holy Spirit wants to lead. Um, these are steps that were practical for us. Because like when we go to like different conferences and ministry schools and even talking to people who literally just love the Lord and want to speak into your life, there's, there's sometimes like, okay, what are the next steps? What is the wisdom behind it um, that we can partner with God and walk with God through this processing? And that also is super helpful when you're personally just talking to God himself. Sometimes we don't know why he's saying yes and then no and then maybe or he showed us this thing. And it didn't come into fruition the way that we thought. But when we actually talk to God about it and spend some time in a relationship, um, there's so much clarity, there's so much understanding. Um, even maybe a changing of questions is what he wants. Because sometimes we see it where um, he doesn't answer in the way that we think he's going to answer, but it's probably because we're not asking the right questions. Right, or we're asking a question that we're not supposed to be focused on. So I hope that you guys are blessed. We would love to process with you too. If there's more questions, if there's dreams or anything too. Um, and hello, oh Gina and Jada. Good morning too. Hello, hi Pastor Sal too. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. And Jody and Jason, Sophie and Paisley are here. They're cuddling with our dog. <laughs> oh my goodness. I just want to welcome up Pastor Ronald uh, for the message today. Thank you, guys. Perfect, perfect. Uh, last week, as uh, Pastor Catherine said, uh, we talked about the tomb, and we talked about how important uh, the tomb is in the life of a believer. What does it specifically mean? I talked to you guys about John chapter 12, where I said, and I keyed in specifically where John chapter 12 says that when a seed falls into the ground and it dies, that it produces much. And I talked to you guys about true fruitfulness and truly living a life in God. And the most important thing I talked to you guys about is what is the commandment of God? And Jesus says the commandment of the Father is that you would have eternal life, which means that you would know him. And today we're going to talk about the resurrection and why it's so important for you. And I'm going to show you and tell you guys some things I'm 100% sure you've never heard about. And we're going to talk about uh, Yom Rashid. You're like, what is that? that? That's the celebration of the first fruits. It's a celebration of the first fruits. Why is it so important? Because this is the day when Jesus was raised. When he came out of the tomb, it coincided with the Jewish uh, celebration of Yom Rashid, the celebration of the first fruits. Oh my goodness, I hope you get it. This. Turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15. And Paul talks about it. If anybody has read uh, extensively Paul's writings, he calls Jesus this. This is important. Ooh, this is going to be good. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 20. But now Christ has been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who are asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all shall be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits. After that, who's after that, those who are Christ at the coming, then comes the end when he delivers up the kingdom to the God to the Father. Oh. Oh my goodness. We stop right there. Why is this so important? Why does Paul call Jesus Christ the first? fruits. Why did Jesus raise on Yom Rashif? Oh, this is so key. This is the festival of the first fruits, 
We've all heard about, oh, give your first fruits. That's your tithe, you know. Give it to God, your first fruits. Jesus raises on the festival of first fruits to show you that he is our offering. He is our first fruits. Oh, my goodness. The first fruits is it, it's it's what you offer to God from the works which you have already done, right? The beginning of your harvest. But Jesus Christ is our first fruits because he is the only work that is acceptable for the Father to receive. That's why it's so simple. This is why it's so important to understand your receipt. He is our first fruit offering that we bring to Christ. He is the work that we present, the work that is accomplished on the cross. Oh my goodness. Do you get it? The word rashif is it, it's 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 the Greek word, it, it's the Hebrew word for the Greek word, which we all know. Genesis. Oh my goodness. Genesis, right? Means, and we all know this, the beginning. Oh my goodness. If you read Genesis chapter one, it says in the the beginning, right? And all, oh, what is that word there? If you look it up, it's in the Rashif. Oh, my goodness. Turn your Bibles to Colossians chapter 1. I'm going to put this all together for you so you understand why it's so important. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. And we've all heard this. For he delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins, and he is, right, the image. Oh, my goodness. He is the image of the invisible God and the firstborn of all creation, right? Verse 16. For by him all things were created, both in the heavens and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things have been created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is also the head of the body of the church, and he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead so that he himself might come to have first place in everything. My goodness, why is this so important? Because the Jewish understanding of first fruits is also your firstborn. Your firstborn. This is why they would offer up their firstborn, and we see it as a pattern throughout the Old Testament. They would consecrate their firstborn unto the Lord. Jesus Christ Oh, my goodness, is the firstborn, the seed that goes into the earth, as I talked about last week, that dies and produces many of his own kind. But before you can have a new rashith, right, a new beginning, what was before must come to an end. Oh, my goodness. I hope you get this. Jesus Christ, Colossians chapter 1 says that he is the beginning. So he comes down to end what was before. And when he raises from the dead, resurrection, now we partake in that resurrection life, that new life. We find in and of ourselves through Christ a new genesis or a new rashith, a new beginning. Oh, my goodness. The cross puts to death, right, what was before. I told you guys, Genesis, I mean, John chapter 12 says, if he be raised up, he will draw all men unto him, right? Jesus Christ on the cross makes a way, an invitation for all to come to him, right? For what? To die on the cross with him. Oh, my goodness. Why? Because when you go on the cross, you die to what was before. We talk about this all the time, right? You go into the tomb, which is what? Oh, my goodness. The day when Jesus went into the tomb was the day of what? Right before Passover. They say it coincided with the offering of the unblemished lamb. Why is this so important? When did they, when did they celebrate? The, the Passover the, and eat this unblemished lamb and sacrifice it the day that we all know, which is in Exodus, right? The coming out of Egypt. 
Oh my goodness. The tomb is where you put to death, right? And come out of Egypt. It coincides on the same day to show you how intricately detailed he is with everything. You go into this Passover, right? You have the unblemished lamb. You must eat all of him, though. Don't ever forget that part. When you read the Bible, it says they had to eat all of the lamb. You don't get to choose which part you get to eat. You must eat all of the lamb, right? And that is to show you that which was before. All of Egypt, the slavery that you were in bondage to is now at an end. The reason why so many people have a problem is because they're still trying to figure out how to die to what was before, and they're so fixated on the cross that they forget that the cross, the tomb, and his resurrection are all one. Paul doesn't say take part in his death and then take part in his resurrection, and then take, he says all in one. Oh, my goodness. Jesus Christ comes as the firstborn, the first fruits to die, to put an end to what was before. How can he do this? Because he was the beginning. That's what it says. Genesis chapter 1, I already told you. In the Rashid, it refers to Jesus as the beginning. This is why it says, before the foundations of the earth, the lamb was already slain. Jesus, the firstborn of many, you're no longer stuck to what Adam did. You're no longer stuck to the ways that it was before because now you come on to Christ. You come to Christ, come to the cross, die with him, be buried with him, experience your own Passover, your own exodus from what was before so you can take part in this new resurrection life which is what we've always been talking about. You be born again, you be free from what was before. Why is it so important that Jesus raised from the dead? Because it shows, oh my goodness, turn back in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I lost it. This is so important. This is so important. Here we go. Verse 35. But someone will say, how are the dead raised? And with what kind of body do they come? How many people have heard this question? What are you talking about in the end? And, and if you watch uh, Auntie Jody and Uncle Jason's message that they posted on Instagram, they go into depth about the, the, the second coming of Christ. And they talk about it. so many people are so fixated on, on the rapture that they don't understand that the revelation is Christ himself. But we'll, they, you can watch their message. Their message is beautiful. But verse 35 says, but someone will say, how are, the, how are the dead raised? And with what kind of body do they come? Verse 36 says, you fool. Oh, my goodness. You fool. That which you sow does not come to life unless it dies. You fool. That which you sow does not come to life unless it dies. This is exactly what I talked to you guys about last week in John chapter 12. Unless it goes into the ground and dies, it does not produce fruitfulness. This is why people get so much into dead works and they think they're being fruitful because it has the appearance of godliness, but it denies its power. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. How does that make sense? Verse 37. And that which you sow, you do not sow the body which is to be, but a bare grain, perhaps of wheat or of something else. Verse 38. But God gives it a body just as he wished, and to each of the seeds a body of its own. He's speaking of Christ. Come on. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. He's saying you can't sow in and of yourself. You don't sow the body which is to be a hope that is deferred. Oh, my goodness. He gives you the body of Christ. I thought that's what you took me to communion. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. Verse 39. 
all flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one flesh of man and another flesh of beast and another flesh of birds and another of fish. There are also heavenly bodies and earthly bodies, but the glory of the heavenly is one. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. But the glory of the heavenly is one. Who are you one with? What is he talking about here? Context is key. He's talking about Jesus. The glory of your heavenly body is in Christ. Why is it so important? Because Adam was the first fruits of the earth. Oh, my goodness. You look at all the other ones. He didn't form any other thing from the dirt. Only Adam he formed out of the dirt. Oh. Ooh. Here we go. Ooh. Verse 42. We'll, we'll, we'll go verse 41 too. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars for stars differ from star in glory. Verse 42. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is so a perishable body, and it is raised in imperishable body. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, and it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. Oh my goodness. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. Oh, my goodness. Here we go again. Verse 45. So also it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living soul. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. Oh, my God. Good. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, then the spiritual. That's why he must put to death what was once natural to you to make now what is spiritual natural. Ooh. Oh my goodness. The first man is from the earth, earthly. The second man is from heaven. Oh my goodness. This is speaking of every born again believer that was natural to you, but now he puts it to death. He lays it to rest. So now what is natural to you is what is spiritual and what is heavenly. Come on. Oh my goodness. As is the earthly, so also are those who is who are earthly. As is the earthly, so also are those who are earthly. And as is the heavenly, so also are those who are heavenly. And just as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Hallelujah. Do you see it? This is the whole thing. It's the gospel. You once were the image, the bearer of what Adam did. This is why I tell you guys, read your Bibles. It says when Adam and Eve had a son, they produced him in their own image. Oh. The Bible says that Cain and everyone following after the sin that Adam and Eve did came following the image of that. But now, because of what Christ did, he puts to rest once and for all. How can we be so sure that, oh my goodness. How can we be so sure that we can have confidence to come to God? Because our conscience is clear. We are free from what was before. Christ killed off the old Adam to give us a new heavenly way. And it's just as natural as it was for you to do the things you did before. That's exactly what the Bible says. I'm not making this up. This is why I say read your Bibles. Mm. Are you ready for this? We're going to continue going. Now, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50. 
Now I say this, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We cannot all sleep, but we all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. You're like, oh, but that's in the book of Revelation. <laughs> Turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 2. You'll love this. Acts chapter 2. You guys got me going all over the place. Yeah, preaching like life depended on it, and it does. <laughs> Acts chapter 2. You guys all love this verse. And when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting, and there appeared to them tongues as of fire distributing themselves as they rested on each of them. Back to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I hope you saw it already, though. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 says what? But in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable. What does the sound of mighty rushing wind sound like? Like a trumpet blowing. Oh, my goodness. Go back and watch the other message where I talked about Pentecost. 50 days, Penta, after what took place. Oh, my goodness. And it coincides with exactly what it's been said here. It was the releasing, the shofar blowing, saying that that which was before, oh my goodness, is at an end. Verse 53, for this perishable must put on the imperishable, and this mortal must put on immortality. But when the perishable were put on the imperishable, and this mortal were put on immortality, you better get this part. When this mortal were put on immortality, then will come about the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. We all love to sing this verse. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. He said, O oh death, where is your sting? O oh death, where is your victory? And then he explains what that is. Verse 56 The sting of death is sin. It's saying, oh, it's saying, where is sin? Oh, my goodness. And the power of sin is the law. We know what Paul says, that the law in and of itself was not bad because it shows you what? What sin actually is. So what is he talking about here? That the power of sin is the law. Because in the Old Testament, they could not do what God desired for them, so their minds, as they offered up sacrifices, Hebrews 9, 10, 11, says they were constantly condemned. Their conscience was not clear. Every year, as they offered up a sacrifice, they were constantly reminded of sin. The power of sin is the law. Why is that? Because you'll never come to God. You'll always believe that you're less than. Your conscience will convict you and say you're not right with God. What is God after? Righteousness. Oh. I already told you last week, the command of the Father is that you would have eternal life. If your conscience is not clean and you don't come to God, how will you know him? This is why it's so important to understand. Yom Rashif. 
Jesus is our first fruit offering. He's the only offering that is acceptable to the Father. That's why it's so Why would you offer up your first fruits? Because you're saying, thanks, God, for what you're producing, but now you will give much more. Do you get it? We offer up Jesus in Christ. Of God offered up his son because he understood what? In the offering of his son, many more would come. This is why it's important to understand. I'm telling you that now you are free from what was before. Why would Jesus die in the way that he died, specifically on the dates that he died on and on the festivals that coincided with them, unless he was speaking to show his people and all those who were around them what was happening? Hallelujah. This is why the resurrection is so important to a believer's life. Many people are still trying to die to what was before. If you're still trying to die, it says you have not put off the perishable and put on the imperishable. You are still stuck to your earthly ways. But thanks be to God. We know the answer. You must be crucified with Christ. Or as what? Peter says in Acts 2.38, you must repent. You must be baptized in water for the remission of your sins. I hope you get this. And you must receive the promise of the Father who is the Holy Spirit. Who raised Jesus from the dead? The Holy Spirit. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead now lives inside of you. How? You must die to what was before so he can raise you up. Yeah, but how does that make sense? I know so many people are stuck in sin who do so many miracles, who do so many things. Well, you better read your Bible because there are people in the Old Testament who did not have the Holy Spirit living inside of them, yet were still used by God, but could not be free and live the way that God wanted them to live and could not do the most important command of the Father. They could not know God. They did not have eternal life. That destroys the construct that so many people believe. But eternal life is to go to heaven. It doesn't say that. Eternal life is to know God. They did not have eternal life. That's why it says they look upon what is now, that which was all the prophets of old, and they're in awe and wonder. Even the angels look down and are astounded by that which we now have. We can know God. You're like, but we're so sinful. This is what you've been taught. That's supposed to be dead. The Bible says, I already told you, I already showed you what Christ paid for. He paid so that could be removed so that you would know him. Not just to remove your judgment, but to bring you into a loving relationship with him. To become one with him. Hallelujah. I think we'll end right there. And next week, maybe Pastor Catherine will have more to talk about uh, the resurrection. But that's why it's so important to understand. This is key in the life of a believer to understand we all must offer up Jesus Christ as our first fruits. We all must die to what was before. Not just so that we can be free from sin, of course, but so that we can know God. Every time I say God paid a price so you can be free from sin, it's because sin is what causes you, oh, you better get this, to separate yourself from God. No, but God separates himself from sin. But I thought Jesus Christ became sin and died. Let that blow your mind. Jesus Christ paid a price so that we could know him. So that we could love 
him so that he would be our desire so that we would offer him up as our first fruits and much more of what we offered would be produced hallelujah and that <laughs> i don't know how to end it after that but that's it we'll come back on friday we'll do ministry time we'll do q and a's uh we'll go deeper into uh whatever questions you guys have about what was just taught but i encourage every single person on here to look as the bible says examine yourselves and say am i dead to what was before and am i living in this resurrection life hallelujah but that's it we're going to end it right there thank you guys all for joining and remember you are a new creation in christ it's not just a mantra you speak out you must understand what it really means you can say it to you blue in the face, but the truth is right there, what I just spoke of. Unless you're living that life, unless you're, you're always be drawn to the earthly, for the earthly is drawn to the earthly, and the heavenly is drawn to the heavenly. I pray that everybody on here and everybody in person would offer Jesus up as their first fruits every single day. Because as we offer him up, we receive more. It's just the truth. But hallelujah. Thank you guys. We love you guys. Amen. That's it. Amen. <laughs> Bye. I <laughs> know <laughs>